the lectern. Hopefully that microphone is working okay, but if not, I'll bring the wireless over the, to there. If you could state your name and your address or affiliation, that would be great. And um, for tonight, I've also brought um, these very high-tech things that my wife put together for me. I'm going to signal you when you have about 30 seconds left with the amber-colored one, and when you got about 10 seconds left, I'll signal you with the red one. So if you could keep your comments to about three minutes, that would be great. It'll help us move along. And if anybody would like to step forward, the public hearing is now open. We have nobody that would like to speak about the budgets. Okay. The public hearing is now closed. Oh, did you want it? Oh. Okay. I'm a little surprised I'm the only one. I guess we were all just waiting for somebody else to get up. How's that microphone? It's on. Okay. Good evening. I'm Ruthie Ann Haley. I live at 49 Brentwood Road. And I'm here to um, uh, articulate my concerns about the school budget continuing to go up. I don't think it's any surprise that, you know, there are some other concerns in town. Most of the residents here don't have children in school, but we appreciate good schools. But over the past 10 years that I've lived here, the enrollments continue to go down, the taxes continue to go up, and I've witnessed sort of an emotional way to create a budget. When the enrollments go down, the classroom size also goes down, and what that does is retain teachers. And I'm not sure we need all these teachers. I'm not an educator. But I think that we should be making decisions that are data-driven and not emotionally driven and not driven by what other towns are doing. So I would just ask you to ask some more questions, find out how many discretionary funds are in the school budget. Last time I looked, there were three. I'm not sure if that continued at this budget, because quite frankly, I didn't go through it. But I think that there are some red flags. You know, as we are a community that takes care of each other, we need to take care of all of the citizens. I know that the schools are very important. I have grandchildren in the school. But I really don't think the continued increases can be justified. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anybody else would like to speak on this? Thank you. Hi. My name is Carol Kainler, and I live at 20 Longfellow Drive in Cape Elizabeth. It's known as Elizabeth Park, right behind the school. And the only thing that I can say, speak to is that I've been retired for a number of years, and my income does not go up. And because of that, I have to budget accordingly and just, you know, make the most out of what I have. But every single year, I've lived here since about 2000, every single year the taxes go up. And as that lady mentioned, the school budget continues to go up. And I just wonder if there isn't some way to manage the taxes, the town budget, a little more. I, don't, I hate to use the word efficiently, but just to, to, um, to take some of us senior citizens in account who you know, just have to struggle with our budgets. So that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank very much. you. Any other comment on the budgets?
Good evening. Uh, Pete Vickerman. I also live at 20 Longfellow Drive. Um, I'm retired, and in the last 10 years, Social Security has had a uh, cost of living allowance increase of an average for the last 10 years of 1. less than 1.5%. In the last three years, the cost of living allowance increased for Social Security recipients. Last year was 0.3%. The year before that was zero. The year before that was zero. So we have not had anything more than uh, uh, barely anything as far as increase goes. And I know there must be some more retirees in, out in the audience. I can see from the looks of you. Uh, take that into consideration. I appreciate what you do and how hard it is to come up with a town budget, but also just remember that there are a lot of people living in this town that are on absolutely fixed incomes. And like I said, the last three years, zero, zero, and then 0.3% increase for a cost of living allowance. <coughs> Try and figure out how you would live your life if that's what you had for a raise for the last three years, or the last 10 years, if you had a raise of an income of 1.5%. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment on the budget? Hi, I'm uh, Tim Thompson. I live at Six Pine Ridge Road. I've been a resident in town for uh, 31 years. All five of my children went through this fabulous school system. And I know uh, over those 30 years, I've seen the town uh, with their one town concept work, work very closely together with our school board and come up with a responsible budget. And uh, what I've heard more and more over the last few weeks than I have in, in quite some time is uh, there's more and more people that are coming up and, and talking about the need to try to, to uh, and, and it might have been your workshop. A lot of people actually watch this from home. Uh, sorry I'm late too, because I might have missed some of the questions, so I might be going over some of the information already, but did we have a power outage here? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All the way into South Portland. But uh, um, I've heard more and more, uh, and it might have been from the workshop where you guys looked at the possibility of going back and just looking at a 1% savings. Um, it might be uh, an exercise that shows, you know, just being completely responsible to people like you just heard the last two speakers. Um, CPIU is a responsible guide that you can use. You know, I, I, I know that uh, was under consideration that it may be not be, but that's what the federal government uses. Um, it's one of the considerations they do use when they're looking at Social Security increases for those folks in town that are on fixed income. And we do have quite a few folks in town that are on fixed incomes, uh, more and more all the time. Um, but it is, I, I did like that exercise, I think it was, it was uh, Councilman, uh, Councilwoman uh, uh, Sullivan put together, which the town went back and, and exercised that that extra consideration and brought that town budget down by 1%. Um, and I'm sure many of the taxpayers that are that never got an increase last year, whether it was their pension or their, their uh, Social Security, appreciated that. Uh, but the exercise, I think, was a good one. And, uh, and I, I th certainly think when you're looking at, and, and the superintendent, I thought I was watching it at home, the superintendent says, I'm not going to whine about it. I'm going to go back and do it. I'm like, done. But it didn't happen. Um, you know, when, when I hear uh, comments about we don't, have a, we don't have a spending problem, we have a revenue problem, when you got people on fixed incomes, they have a revenue problem. They don't have a spending problem. So I think it's something to take into consideration, and, and thank you for all the work that you all do. Thank you very much. Any other comments? Last chance. Seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. Okay. So before us, uh, we will tackle in order um, a number of the individual um, motions um, pertaining to the fiscal 18 budget. 
And for each of these, um, having had a public hearing today, um, the recommendation uh, is to refer these to, or, or is it, are we actually tabling, tabling it to the, the May 15th meeting? Um, so I will entertain a motion, start ticking these off. <laughs> Council Sullivan? I move that we take, uh, that prior to tabling, we take these items individually. Right. Yeah, that's what I was suggesting, one by one. By one. Okay, yeah. so one by one. Yep. Okay. I think we have to do it one by one. Councilor Caitlin Jordan. I move that we table item 75-2017. For a second. Councilor Ray. Discussion. If I just, oh. uh, one point of clarification, you may just want to Put the to date. amend it uh, to a state date specific, if you would please. Table it to May 15th. Thank you. 2017. <laughs> <laughs> Still second. <laughs> Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Right, next up is item number 76-2017, school budget approval. Council Sullivan. I move to amend item 76-2017. Number seven of that item reads that changes in anticipated state subsidy 50% to reduce taxes, 50% to fund balance, that in the event the town receives more state general purpose aid for education than the $1,827,740 amount included in the school budget, the town shall use 50% of the extra amount to reduce the amount of taxes raised for the school budget and 50% to supplement the school department unassigned fund balance. I move that we amend that that read that in the event the town receives more state general purpose aid for education than the $1,827,740 amount included in the school budget, the town shall use the extra amount to reduce the amount of taxes raised for the school budget period. And I have that in print. I can pass out to everyone. So what I'm proposing is what you see highlighted. This I took from the uh, supporting documents. This is a school department additional budget article F, article for fiscal year 18, dated April 11, 2017. So that's what you're seeing before you. So basically I'm proposing an amendment such that if there is extra state money that comes back to the schools that it all go to, to property tax relief. Thank you. Is there a second for Jessica's amendment? Councilor Ray. Thank you. Discussion. Councilor Grennan. I guess my question would be what, and hopefully you can answer this, what have we done historically? I know what we've done the last couple of years, but historically, have we returned 100% to the taxpayers if we were to get in excess of the amount that was put in the bus budget? Or has, have we um, given these special requests? Well, uh as I was talking with the department heads this morning and with uh, Catherine Mesmer, the business manager for the schools, I, this is, uh, I think it's a good faith effort because it hasn't happened by the schools in the past. Uh, it hasn't been an issue historically that they've received more. Uh, the last time I think was 2015, if memory serves me, last, the last high watermark as far as the amount of state subsidy came. So at that point in time, the council and the school board came back and had that discussion, if I want to say it was in August or Ju July at least at some point after, because the vote will take place on June 13th and the legislature will still be in session. And that year that the number came back and then the <coughs> council and the school board discussed that, that it hadn't entered into the equation up until that point. So that's why they came back. So to, in this case, the school board is looking and, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they're looking to say you know, in the event that they do receive more funding, at least they're addressing the issue now versus having to come back and try to reset the deck chairs uh, okay. in, in July or August. So um, 
this is a novel approach that has not that has not happened uh, before, but we are in novel times. I guess we're waiting for the legislature to come forward and 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 decide how they are going to funding it, fund it and at what level, because uh, there still is the question of the three percent additional tax on the incomes over two hundred thousand, as well as how they actually what kind of monies they're actually allocating to. Uh, general purpose aid to education. So those numbers are in the mix. And quite frankly, uh, also in the mix is uh, possibly revenue sharing, uh, which is another question that exists. We may receive more. Uh, what has happened in the past is any revenue sharing that the town receives is applied towards reduction of taxes. Uh, so if we get more, uh, then that, that has automatically generally been, been put in there. Again, that those, neither one of them has been a problem uh, much in the past. Uh, so, for what it's worth, but it is, uh, but it is. This is a novel approach. It has not happened before. So they are ahead of the ahead of the game versus having to react. So I think it's good to have the question there, and it's just a question of where the council wants to wants to go with uh, their answer. Uh, Other discussion? Everyone have a copy. Correct me if I'm wrong, we, we did this last year, we just didn't get any, there was no- There was no additional. Ad additional funds received, correct? But we took, we took the same vote last year, did we not? To, to I don't think so. I, I don't recall. I, I thought we've done this in the past, or this has been done in the past, no? Not okay. to my recollection. I think we've talked about it, I don't think it's, it's, it's been okay. formally maybe, yeah. maybe I'm confusing it with just discussion yeah. and workshop. I think so. And, okay. Other discussion? Uh, Council Case and Jordan? Um, so since we've never done this formally, apparently, if we take the whole thing out, you can still go through the process of what you're saying. Should they get a million dollars, more than they think they're going to get? We can have the same discussion they did in 2015 where it comes back to the council and we decide how to divvy it up then. You could. It wouldn't be as clean. Right, but that's you could have you could before. have that discussion uh, back two years ago is when mm -hmm. a lot of towns had that same discussion. Uh, I'm in an SAD where I live, and the board at that point had to have the discussion here because it's a council form of government with the responsibilities that you have. You end up having to go through those discussions and, and determining what you want to do uh, at that point in time. But uh, I think this is a good faith effort to address it early versus versus later. Uh, and it's trying to trying to save those uncomfortable conversations in July. So if you look at it now, and uh, you can you can come to what you want for an answer now. Oftentimes, if there was more received, they would probably go to unassigned fund balance because it's like any other revenue that you received a greater amount during the year, it would just flow to your unassigned fund balance at that point in time. But I think uh, what you're looking at here is trying to pre or trying to figure out exactly where the legislature is going to break. Other discussion, comments? There's another question. Go ahead. I'm looking at version A, B, and C. So A is the 50-50, B is all goes back to the reduced taxes, C is all goes to the school. Can somebody just, well, mm -hmm. yes. the school's unassigned fund balance. Right. That's what. Yep, yeah. The last one it would go. Uh, so if you received, or, uh, if you received more than you were anticipating, it would just go into the. Uh, oh, into, unassigned. into the town's unassigned fund balance. So I'm trying to quickly read it. Who's unassigned it would, fund? It balance? would go into the school's That's unassigned fund right. balance. Okay. The the last part, I just couldn't. Maybe somebody can explain. We're crossing, or Jessica's suggesting to cross out the last part of version B. Mm -hmm. Um, in the event the amount is less than the amount included in the school budget, the town treasurer shall execute a journal entry in the amount of any shortfall to be debited from the town's unassigned fund balance and credit to the school department's fund balance. So if they fall short $200,000 of what they think, the, uh, the town's unassigned fund balance is going to make up for it? Cover the, cover the distance, difference, yeah. Okay. Wait a minute. I, I, it seems like you're suggesting that it not. 
correct? Right. That's, That's she's right. Hexing my product. So I'm just trying to. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just having been just handed this, I'm just trying I to. I thought the way you phrased it, you were yeah. stating it affirmatively. No, I'm just no. trying to understand <laughs> okay. the the three versions on this piece of paper. Yep. Versus yeah. also kind of a another version. Right. <coughs> Xed it out. I just want to make sure I'm totally understanding what. Going on here. However, if, if, if just to, as a clarification, on point seven, that's currently in the in on, on under discussion in in our agenda. The it doesn't have that wording as far as it being debited from the town's unassigned fund balance. Well, that's what I was trying to understand because yeah. I was trying to read the one on the agenda. The original one does not it, have that. It, I was reading that one that confused me what it meant to execute a journal entry in the amount of any shortfall to be debited from. I was like, I don't know what that means. And then I'm trying to read these new versions and just trying to if, know what's, what's actually being voted on. I was if, just trying to make sure I understood what's going on. If they would receive less during the year, then they would have to adjust accordingly. Is, you know, they would have to adjust their budgets accordingly to, to right. adjust to that shortfall. Instead of, instead of having an unassigned fund balance transfer from the school side over there. What is our unassigned fund balance at? Do we know? Currently, we are at about 3 million, five, it's on your <laughs> dashboard, uh, $3,571,452. So we will be making transfers out of that in the upcoming budget, specifically to capital projects that we have. So what do you know, if all of our budget goes through, what does our unassigned fund balance look like if then we need to take money out to give to the schools? Like once you're saying we're at 3.5 million right now, yep. but we're already planning on dipping into that for our budget. What does that bring our unassigned fund balance to if nothing else happens in the world, just those deductions. July one, about two and a half. Two and a half. So it gives, goes down to one million. And drops. Them. Yeah, we have a million currently allocated in the in the capital projects. That's there, uh, consistent with what the town's done for for so years. It sounds like we have a lot of money, but we wouldn't. We well, we still. Yeah, million. you're still setting aside uh, one month's worth of expenses yeah. out of that right, amount too. So yeah. Like, so right now it sounds really great, but yeah, our own budget will bring it down substantially. Just trying to. Yep. I'll sell it. Yep. Yep. The reason, um, Caitlin, is that I found the language in number seven on our agenda, the last sentence, rather confusing. And what I didn't want, uh, uh, what I personally did not want to see was that we somehow indemnified them against a loss, that if they, for some reason, got less than they were supposed to get, which is the currently the one eight million that I, I was not, I'm not in favor of making up the difference considering the budget increases they're proposing already. But that, that last sentence, you know, I just didn't know what that meant. It, it seemed odd to me. So as long as the town manager can assure us that it's just basically discussing their own journal entry and it's not meaning that we give them the money, basically, then I'm okay with it. But I would prefer that, should they receive extra money, that all that all of those funds go to property tax relief. And, uh, no, I think to, he's saying that. Yeah, just, just just as a friendly uh, friendly point of clarification, I'd say if you just okay. if you just redo took the uh, fifty percent parts out of the yep. out of number seven, you'd probably accomplish accomplish That's your goal. That's fine. That's fine. I, I found this document today online. I was just looking everything over and because I was wondering where it came from because this, the, this 50% uh, uh, to reduce taxes, the 50% to go to the schools was something that I didn't recall being discussed at our joint board workshop. And so I was trying to figure out, well, what, you know, when I was reviewing the agenda, where did that come from? And I've been poking around and this is what I found. And so that they originally had had several versions, but this is you know the one that's on the website uh, on the agenda. I I agree with the town manager. You can just change that to 100% goes to property tax relief. I'm I'm happy with that. So does for the motion just read? Second, okay, yeah. For for those that have an interest in this, um, obviously not this minute, but I know that this was a point of discussion and vote at the school board meeting when the. Um, vote was taken to 
on, on the budget to put, to put forward to the council um, uh, for approval. So um, if you want to go back and, and see any of that, it's available on the website and you can, you can see what discussion took place and so on. So these were the three, um, the three options, options that were presented to the school board for consideration. Councilor Grennan? My question is, so if you were to say 100% goes back, would the motion as you've written it stand or should we change, do we need to? Uh, I can. Amen. If you, want, if you wanted to uh, rescind your motion and then. Yeah. And then and just re and then restate, restate my motion. Restate, you may be yeah. fine. I'd be happy to do that. I'd like to rescind my motion and restate it to read. <clears throat> Changes in anticipated state subsidy that in the event the town receives more state general purpose aid for education than $1,827,740, the town shall use 100% of the extra amount to reduce the amount of taxes raised for the school budget. You'd Is there still a second to that revised? I'll second it again. Kathy, thank you. Discussion. I can just uh, yep. <laughs> maintain uh, additional friendly uh, comments. You may want may to. Wanna, yeah. You may want to strike that part uh, after the comment after budget and the 50% part there mm -hmm. to the uh, to the end of where the semicolon is, where it says fund balance, and then keep the semicolon and then keep the last part about the journal entry in case you have less, in case they receive less, because you need to you need to address both points of the uh, of the math po math problem. Okay. Uh, that would be just a. Friendly, friendly, uh, friend well, of the court brief, if you will. I'm happy to accept that. Uh, Great. That correction, if the town clerk is clear. <coughs> yep. Just with, that you clear with that? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Yep. Sure. Do you want to make a point, Kathy? Do you want me to second that? No. <laughs> no. I, I think we're just clarifying it, but. Mm -hmm. yep. Do you think maybe it would be helpful if we just had it read back in its entirety the way we're presenting it? Sure. Or is Deb not quite Deb, ready? Would you mind that? Sure. Changes in anticipated state subsidy that in the event the town receives more state general purpose aid for education than the $1,827,740 amount included in the school budget, the town shall use 100% of the extra amount to reduce the amount of taxes raised for the school budget, and that in the event the amount of the state aid is less than the amount included in the school budget, the town treasurer shall, shall execute a journal entry in the amount of any shortfall to be debited from. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Go ahead. What does that mean to be a journal entry in the amount of any shortfall to be debited from? What does that mean? I, I guess it, I don't understand like, the accounting part of it. I know Kat, Catherine's here. <laughs> Kathy, you want to? We, we talked about this for a while on. Uh, huh? So I know she, she can explain the term better than I can, but. Uh, <coughs> I mean, it just sounds like you're ending yeah. the sentence at from. I just don't. It's legalese, and I'm sorry, <laughs> it wasn't my language. Um, basically, what happens is if we do get a reduction in subsidy, and at the end of the year when the audit is all done and we didn't receive enough money to cover it or we spent more and there is a shortfall, there will be a transfer from the town, a direct entry from the town to the school to cover that. But it wouldn't be as big as what they're saying because we normally don't spend our entire budget and we normally do get revenues to help offset that. But that is technically what it is. With or without the rest of that sentence. Uh, so I was yeah. trying to understand, okay. you just well, end it, doesn't make it go away. That's all. I just wanted to grasp what was happening. Thank you. Yeah. Very interesting. I don't know if we, okay, thanks, Kathy. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> so can we put the last sentence back, like the last half of the sentence back on, if it doesn't change where it goes, comes from? Mm. You mean the last half from? The town's unassigned. I mean, it, like, you end the sentence that'd be debited from, and whether or not you have the rest of the sentence, so it, it still comes from the town's unassigned fund balance, so it just seems so silly that you're okay. in the final. Right. 
Huh. Okay. So you have to, and if you want to not identify them, then you need to basically, like you originally had ended, then you have to scratch or specifically okay. say, yep. Sorry. reduce the amount of taxes, you know, the 100% to reduce the amount of taxes raised for the school budget, and in the event the state aid is less than, yeah. Which is my it's the original. school's law. Like you need to, you need to rewrite it so that it specifically says something like that. And so I would suggest maybe since we're actually voting on this it's next week, original. maybe we could. I'm super confused at what's going on. Okay. So maybe we could work on it for the final vote next week because we've had a lot of versions back and forth. I, I mean, either way. How about uh, I can work with Finance Chair Sullivan? We can. Get the proper language. Would that be mm -hmm. fine? Yeah, and and of course, what you're pointing out is my original, right? My very original statement because I was nervous about that that sentence and was not getting a definition of what that really meant, which is another way to indemnify, which you know I'm not in favor of at this which, point. So I, I'm very happy to um, rescind my right. amendment. My, my motion, is that how it would amendment. work? Yep. Yeah. Amendment. Amendment to the motion. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I will um, work with the town manager okay. and. So, to be clear, language. for next week, we can expect the presentment of a final language amendment. amendment. This, as, as it stands right now, item number 76 2017 will be what appears before <coughs> us next Monday on the 15th to vote on. But we will expect language reflecting an intended amendment from you. Yes. Cleans us all up. Yeah. And before we, before we do that, I do, since we're just talking about it, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Can you remind all of us roughly, when we had our workshop, I just don't have the number, and I, I'm not sure that the PowerPoint that you went through mm -hmm. when we did the workshop, we saw it on screen, but I don't, I don't remember mm -hmm. having a copy of it. Um, but in any case, the 1% that you asked for and you scenarioed yes. out for both the municipal and the school budgets. Can you remind me roughly, and doesn't even have to be exact, but roughly what that 1% equated to for the school budget? The school budget. Um, it was at like 230. I, I, I yeah, like 200. a 1%. 219, yeah. I think it was. And can, well, I actually have it all written out. Yeah. <laughs> I could spread, I could just pass it around. But a 1% decrease. Um, in the school budget would lower their increase from 591,469 to 3 by to 3 372,805 so their budget total would be with the 1% decrease 24,660,350 but that difference between the 5 something and the 3 something was in the neighborhood of two yeah. twenty two thirty or something, I think. Right? And that is actually that's actually a little bit lower than the superintendent's original budget to the school board on March seventh. But not a whole lot. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Um, Councilor Garnett? I, I just had a quick if we could if you're gonna prepare a motion, um, town manager on uh, the language for Jessica where she doesn't want the shortfall cover, could we also have a motion prepared or consideration where we would cover the shortfall, what that language would look like? As we, I, I, I have a feeling we're going to debate both sides. So um, we might as well have that prepared. Yep, the current one we have would be in that, the yeah. in that vein. Beside the 50 50. So yeah. 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 We changed the 100. Okay. Yeah. But we can, uh, we can put those both together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understood it to be that way. It would be nice to have it written so we don't go round and round. Okay, so I don't believe, Deb, that we have an actual motion to table item number 76-2017. So I'm looking for a motion to table number 76-217. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Kathy. Any discussion? Mm -mm. All in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous. Item number 77-2017, approval of the Cumberland County Assessment. Caitlin? I move we table that to May 15, 2017. Thank you. Is there a second? Patty, all those in favor? Uh, and is there any discussion? No. All those in favor? <coughs> Item number 78-2017, approval of the local homestead exemption funds. 
Caitlin. I move that we table that to May 15, 2017. Thank you. Is there a second? <coughs> Jessica. A second. Any discussion? All those in favor? Item number 79-2017, the property tax levy limit. Caitlin. I move that we table that to May 15, 2017. Thank you. Is there a second? second. Penny, you're up. Yeah. Any discussion? <laughs> All those in favor? I'm getting there, folks. Yeah. Item number 80-2017, the proposed fiscal year 2018 general fund budget summary. I move that we table that to May 15, 2017. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Patty, back to you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Item number 81-2017, the Cape Elizabeth Rescue Fund budget. Caitlin. I think we approved these ones. Yeah, yeah, I, was I move say, that we approve thank you. item 81-2017, Cape, Cape Elizabeth Rescue Fund budget. Is there a second? Penny, discussion? Jessica. No, I'm oh. sorry. You're good on these. What's that? You're good on, on yep. from here on out, yep. you're, you're okay. You don't need yep. to put no, the most on the table. No. On We're on a roll. <laughs> a no discussion? All those in favor? <coughs> Item number 82-2017, the Cape Elizabeth Sewer Fund budget. Patty. I move that we approve item number 82-2017. Is there a second? Second. Caitlin, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Item number 83-2017, the Cape Elizabeth Spurwink Church Fund Budget. Patty, again. Sure, I move that we approve item number 83-2017. Is there a second? Second. Caitlin, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Item number 84-2017, the Cape Elizabeth Riverside Cemetery Fund Budget. Patty. I move that we approve item number 84, 2017. Is there a second? Any? Any discussion? All those in favor? Item number 85-2017, the Portland Headlight Fund Budget. Patty. Sure, I move that we approve item number 85, 2017. Second. Is there, Caitlin, second? Any discussion? All those in favor? Item number 86-2017, the Fort Williams Park Fund. Patty. Sure, I move that we approve item number 86, 2017. Second. Thank you, is there any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Item number 87-2017, the Cape Elizabeth Infrastructure Improvement Fund budget. A zero dollar item, yeah. but he's sure. one to approve. I move that we approve item number 87, 2017. Thank you, Patty. Second. Thank you, Caitlin. Any discussion? All those in favor? Thank you very much. Number 88-2017, the Thomas Jordan Fund budget. I move that we approve item number 88, 2017. Thank you, Second. Patty. Thank you, Caitlin. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? I, uh, item number 89-2017, the Land Acquisition Fund Budget. I move that we approve item number 89-2017. Thank you, Patty. Second. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Caitlin. Is there any discussion? No? All those in favor? Um, Council Yes, um, I had uh, asked that uh, our facility, facilities director be here this evening. Yep. Be, for I have questions on the capital improvement budget. At the beginning of the meeting, I didn't see him. Okay. At, in the audience. He was up yep, there. He is. And I. I lost him for a minute. He was here, but he's I, uh, back there now. Yeah, and I, I was hoping to have those questions. You know, have. Uh, perhaps we could do that now or next week but i you know i was hoping to um, i just know what your council's wishes 
Give we it. have Greg here. Okay. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do that now. Thank you. Thank you. Greg, you mind? Good evening. <laughs> Greg. You're welcome. Hey, Greg. How you doing? Hey, Greg, there were, um, when we had a joint board workshop, several of us had questions about the facilities budget. Sure. And but there wasn't a narrative, and I saw a, a $319,000 uh, figure coming out of your budget. Um, I was wondering if you could give us an update or any explanation of that, what, how that affects uh, the facilities department. Um, can you help us at all? So are you looking for the capital end of it? Yeah, and the, um, I guess it was handouts, was it page 45? It's page 39. 39? Yes. 39 out of 52, 52 in the yes. handout section. Do you have that? I don't have that, my budget book with me. I'm sorry? I don't have my budget book, just my workbook for it. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, it says budget line 9,005-4301, capital improvements, uh, down 39%, reduced because of budget constraints. So my, the, some of the concerns expressed at the joint board, <clears throat> the joint workshop were that uh, we've had, we had a recent bond for, for the school department for capital improvement items. We had one in 2004, and I was hoping to have, and I'd asked for, for this, it hasn't arrived, but a, a project update on the bonded. The amounts that we've bonded since 2004 for school buildings, et cetera, and what has been, what work has been accomplished with that bond money and what hasn't and, you know, and where we are with all that. And so when I saw that, you know, out of your, your budget, it, you know, started me thinking, well, you know, are we, uh, are we not funding our capital improvement plan as, you know, as, as we'd intended? And um, can you just speak to that? There's been a change in the, or a reduction in the capital improvement funds. Um, mostly to cover some of the other added costs throughout the district that needed to be covered, um, changes that have to happen. Um, so we reduced uh, the actual CIP line item by 450,000, um, but that number was kind of changed because there was some increases in other areas in my budget that had to happen. Uh, some of our contracted service budgets have to go up with our contracts. Um, but there was a change in uh, the dollar amount, which made a change in basically the scope of the work that we're doing. So uh, some of the capital items, some roofs, uh, waterproofing projects, things like that had, had been removed from the budget, uh, more in favor for looking at uh, bonding those <coughs> amounts in the long run. Questions for Greg? Thank you. I thought. I have a question. Yeah, I got it. Um, in the facility section, page three of three, um, there's a whole list of things and there's dates next to them. And I was trying to figure out, like, fiscal year 2018, does that mean it's planned for that? Um, it's in your section, page three. Of three. It's that big, long, colorful. Which page are you looking at? Page under the facilities. Um, facilities and transportation tab. Um, mm -hmm. And it's page, well, two of three and three of three. It's the big, long, colorful. Yep. This is a list of projects. Um, for a five-year plan, um, okay. we had made adjustments or changes, uh, basically changed from our 10-year plan to a five-year plan and readjusted uh, some of those items accordingly um, and more in favor of looking at uh, bonding 
for some of the larger infrastructure or capital jobs instead of doing them over a stepped period of time that we have been doing. So, and thus where you see the reduction in the actual CIP line items. So, essentially we went from the 950,000 CIP to the 500,000 CIP and then keeping that 500,000 as the benchmark, this five-year capital plan was uh, created to to meet the 500,000 with the thought um, uh, or the direction that we were asked to look at in creating a larger bonded, a bonding type projects in the future. In other words, to take a whole bunch of the projects and put them together. So uh, uh, I think the, the number was five plus million dollar bond is what they were looking at for that in the future. So it's taken the money out of the CIP <clears throat> that was planned for initially. Correct. And it's sticking it over as a potential for a bond. Correct. Thank you. Other questions for Greg? Yep. Jessica. And this, this was something that, that you've been working on with the superintendent? At the superintendent's direction, yes. And this is a this is a five year capital planning, and uh, as of was has this been formulated like this April this year? This this is brand new, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, April seventeenth is when I was asked to put that together. Okay. All right. I'm all set. Thank you. Thank you. Here Any other questions? Thank you. Thanks, Greg. Thanks for being here. I'll grab it. No. Thank you, Greg. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any last things on the budget before we move on? No. Next item on the agenda is number 90-2017, shooting range ordinance update. Patty, okay. could you please introduce this one? I will. So um, on behalf of the Ordinance Committee, uh, you have before you the proposed amendments to the Shooting Range Ordinance. Um, as you know, um, the Town Council referred the Shooting Range Ordinance to the Ordinance Committee for technical revisions at the February 13th Town Council meeting. Um, and we were asked to give it a review for two specific reason reasons. The first was to, um, that we needed to eliminate the role of the Firing Range Committee. Um, and this was because during the appointments process in December, um, nobody applied for that, and it was assigned to the town council. Um, the second reason was that when the ordinance was written, um, the committee at the time, the Fire Range Committee, agreed that after um, it was used in a real world situation, that it would be smart probably to go back and look at what's working and what is not. Um, so you have before you two versions of the draft changes. Um, in your packet this evening, and uh, one has save changes, the other had track changes. Um, if you look at the track changes, it looks like a plethora of you know um, changes, and it's very, very difficult to read. So I, I would hope that you um, utilized the saved change version, and with that, um, you should find it you know a easier to read, and b it depicts you know really how the ordinance will read um, if it is approved. Um, so. Um, Let's talk about the draft before you. If um, the draft basically was reorganized to make it easier for all parties to use, um, the ordinance committee felt that the draft makes the information clearer to the applicant um, and as well clearer to the reviewing authorities. Right. Um, Almost all the existing ordinance text was preserved and relocated. Uh, Maureen actually took the existing ordinance and cut it into pieces, shifted it around, and so that we would um, retain, yeah, literally, literally cut it. Yeah, and it was a Herculean effort on her part to uh, make sure that all the intent and all um, in, the, the things that were necessary to be in that ordinance were in it. Um, <clears throat> the ordinance has three functional um, sections, um, which mirrors other ordinances in town. Um, the first is the review procedure, the second submission requirements, and the third licensing standards of review. Um, so here's the highlights. I know you have it before you, but I'll go through, for those that are at home and here in the audience, I'll go through the highlights of the proposed changes. Uh, <clears throat> first, the role of the firing range committee uh, was removed. And 
The proposed amendments um, assign the police chief to receive and review a license application versus the town council. Uh, the police chief is also in charge of renewals, enforcement, and receipt of complaints. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. If an issue with the renewal, uh, the chief will make a recommendation to the town council. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. As for license duration, the license duration is ex is expanded from one year, um, where it was, to three years. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, renewal. Under that section, a renewal of the license is required every three years. Um, the current ordinance had a one-year renewal. Uh, so in this dialogue, <clears throat> we had, it was at some length, we discussed everything from one year renewal to no expiration, but ultimately we chose a duration that was um, agreeable to all parties involved. Um, you'll notice that the renewal requirement is clearly called out in its own section. The renewal must be requested before the date that the license expires. And you'll also see that the renewal process is spelled out to be um, a written request from the licensee um, that includes an ask, um, assertion that no material changes from the licensee have occurred. Uh, renewal is submitted to the police chief, and a renewal can be issued for three years with additional renewals available without limitation. Uh, next, uh, the annual inspection. With the change to a three-year renewal, a butters of the Sp Spring Rod and Gun Club um, asked for an annual inspection. Um, to ensure this was done, language for an annual inspection or a walkthrough uh, was added into the ordinance. Um, written notification. The ordinance states that when a licensee or a renewal of a license is given, the town must provide written notification with an expiration date. The licensee must keep track of the expiration date and apply for renewal prior to the date. And if the licensee misses the window to apply for renewal and, and um, expiration date passes, the licensee then must apply for a new license. As far as enforcement, the draft assigns all enforcement authority to the police department. Um, we put this under, we, after it was uh, reviewed and finished, we put it under legal review. The draft was reviewed by the town attorney, Durwood Parkinson. Uh, it, reviewed the ordinance in light of LD 1500, which is a main legislative act to protect and promote access to sport and shooting ranges. And he concluded that the uh, ordinance is legally valid. Um, last, insurance. The minimum insurance was reduced from three million to one million as the town council approved this requirement last year. Um, so I know you probably all have questions, um, but before um, that, if you'd like me to, I'll put a motion on the table so we can open the dialogue. Um, before we do that, I'm going to invite um, members of the public that okay. are here that wish to speak on this um, to come forward. Um, come up, queue up at the podium, and again, like we did before, if you could state your name, your address, or affiliation, and uh, try and limit your comments to about three minutes, please. Hello, my name is Tammy Walter. I'm the president of the Spurwick Rod and Gun Club. Bear with me, I just wrote this real fast. Uh, I didn't even really look it over. The um, ordinance committee worked extremely hard for the last few months um, reviewing and revising the shooting range ordinance. Our town planner, Maureen O'Meara, she's not here, is she? Nope, she'll be back tomorrow, uh, Wednesday. Oh, well, I hope somebody tells her that <laughs> she was, uh, she, uh, she personally um, took a lot of time with me and I'm sure other people explaining the process. Um, I think that Maureen is a saint. Um, I don't know how she kept everything straight, but she did a great job. Uh, but I also want to thank um, Patty Grennan, uh, Kathy Ray, and Caitlin Jordan for uh, all your work too. You did a great job. Um, um, even um, one of our newest council member, um, Patty Grennan, came down to our range and checked it out and spent time there. And, and um, it was re we really appreciate that because having people on the council that don't really know what we do and can't see us right up front, you know, that was really, really great, Patty. That was great. Anyway, um, let's see. Um, so I just want you to know that I appreciate the counselors and all the really hard, <coughs> difficult work that they did. And I want to thank Chief Williams, too, for his guidance and input. We're really happy that the license renewals and the yearly inspections are going to lie with the police department. We always have and always will continue to make safety um, at our range our number one priority. 
Therefore, as I've said many times, we will always gladly, gladly work with our police department. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, <coughs> uh, I'll entertain a motion. Yep. I, just before I do that, I will um, also say that, I, uh, that the ordinance committee did um, review this issue for six meetings. And uh, comments were solicited from the police chief, the code enforcement officer, um, people from the abutting community, and as well um, the Spurring, Grotting, and Glugging Club who just spoke. So, um, and as well, we received over 20 emails from community members. So we, we did take all the input and make sure that we came up with a compromise and something I think that really turned out to be pretty agreeable, I hope. Um, so with that, um, I move to set a public hearing on June 12, 2017 for the proposed amendments to the shooting range ordinance. Your second. Second. Kathy, discussion. Jessica. Well, I would like to commend the ordinance committee as a counselor who was here from the beginning of the, the round this, this decade, I guess. <laughs> Um, and knowing all that we went through and, uh, and how hard we tried to um, um, put something together that, that with an emphasis on safety. I think this is, you know, a, a, a really well-worked uh, revision and it's really, I mean, it's basically a reorganization. Most of the original ordinance is here, is just reworked. And it's, it sets it up to be more in, in line with our, our other ordinances. Much easier to read, much easier to follow. Um, and so I think they, they, all, they all did, with Maureen's help, a wonderful job. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of referring the proposed changes to the shooting range ordinance to a public hearing on June 12th, 2017. Thank you very much. Seeing no other new business, is there anybody from the public that wishes to come forward to speak on something not on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Caitlin. Is there a second? I'll second that. Patty, all those in favor? Motion. Thank you very much. Have a good night, everybody.